Real estate agents, where do you need to focus your business for 2024 to achieve maximum results? Let's chat about that today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 268. You can uh, find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Come. Jen O'Brien, I uh, really enjoyed our conversation last week on AI, and um, I played around even more with it this week. And um, I even tricked my wife a couple times by giving her things and, like, you know, what do you think about that? She's like, is this, is this AI? Well, yeah. <laughs> you can write better than this. Well, honey, I had to write like a paragraph and a half to make it give me this. Anyway. We'll see. I'm, my I, my goal is to not to get her to be a total convert necessarily, but for her to actually say, you know what, maybe the sky is not completely falling. Okay. Well, that, that that keep me posted on that because it's you know our approach was quite brilliant. Is you it's happening? So do you help 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 create it? To me, it's an extension of all of us that are contributing to it. How everybody thinks and acts right. and talks. So we're teaching it. It's an extension of us. So do you want to be a part of that? That's what you said last week, Matt, and that was so profound. Well, and, and I hear you're, and, and, helping and, get you know, clear about it. Right. And and we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about focusing your, you know, where to focus your business today uh, on the podcast, mm -hmm. you know, for for 24. And, you know, we're going to continue to show you how you can use AI to save time and maximize your uh, profitability. So, you know, it's all exactly. all part of this, the, the, the game plan for, for next year. So if you missed it, go back and you can catch it. And we're starting to break down show show clips, you know, from our podcast and putting them up on our TikTok channel, which is just WBNL Coaching, and then we're going to start posting them over on our Instagram and Facebook as well, so you can get the little sound bites if you don't want to watch the whole podcast. So there you go. Yeah. All absolutely. right. All right. All right. Let's dive into our today's topic, which is where do you need to focus your business in 2024? And I want to kick this off, Matt, by talking about the the obvious, but maybe not the obvious, because I've talked to so many people this year. Personally, I've had one of the best real estate years ever. That's right. How we focused and been 100% all in and about the first thing that we're going to talk about, which is understanding that there are always going to be people that need to buy and sell. Now, fact, not as many people put their homes on the market and sales across the country are maybe down anywhere from 40 to 50% compared to the previous year or, or last couple of years or, you know, I can't even count it during the pandemic years, which is off the charts. But the reality is it, did, it wasn't like it went to zero. However, if you're not aware of what's happening and you get caught into the mindset, if you did this year, because this is important while we're starting this out, because the new year is going to be a little bit like how it is right now. We have a lot of things happening. We have an election year. Inflation is still not where the Fed wants it to be. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But if you don't get, you know, you have to accept reality and then realize that whatever the market is, it is. It's always going to change. That's a constant right. thing that you can count on change is inevitable, but there are always going to be people who need to buy and sell and you've got to adjust to that. If you didn't do that last year, you still need to make that adjustment right now. Now, I just want to talk us through this little story, which is the classic thing most of you have heard, because I've heard it as an active realtor here in Las Vegas, and that's buyers who say, I don't think I want to buy right now because one of, one of two or both of these things I'm going to wait till the interest rates come down and I'm going to wait for the market to crash. Okay. Cause yeah. that's what I've been hearing and that's what I've been reading. And you know, the market's going to crash because if you just go online right now, you know, somebody out there is doing some clickbait on YouTube saying the market's going to crash. I just saw a video yesterday that's and it was, it's an old, it's an old story about how Airbnb is going to crash the market. Cause somebody posted an article about how oh. many, you know, you know, yeah. how many people who have Airbnb, they're not, you know, and honestly, let me tell you some things that have happened on that. This is how you stay on top of it. Airbnb has adjusted there in other short term. I don't know about other short term, but Airbnb and for sure has put a whole new spin in there to say it's not just short term. They're trying to make it also be midterm, like use our platform to find people who want to rent longer than two weeks or a month or a weekend. Interesting. So, you know, Whatever. It's like you've got to figure that out. So right now you're hearing that and you're going to keep on hearing that. 
So this is the talk, the mindset you have to get in, because I personally think right now in my market, it might be different in yours, but in my market right now, especially with new homes, some of the best possible deals are right now, if we can get the buyer an interest rate that's lower than the 7% that it is right now for good credit and no points as we record this. Right. So I'll give you an example. We just put somebody under contract yesterday in a new home that's getting 4.75% fixed wow. FHA, all their closing costs covered. They're just coming in with their down payment. Now, that rate, I don't even know when they could get down to 4.75 in the future, if yeah, ever, from if where ever we are in now, a long right. time. So if you are aware of how to do that, especially new homes as an opportunity, then you can have a conversation and say, what if we could get you into a payment that's this much? Okay, so alternatively, so let's just, just talk about that. Do you have a way that you can help people negotiate on a resale or a new home because the market is the way it is in your area that you might be able to negotiate because there's not as many people buying, which means there's not as much competition for your buyer. Well, let's fast forward to the future. Okay, let's move on. The future um, when the market interest rate is lower, let's just go there. Okay, I don't know when that's going to be. Personally, I think it's going to be the second half of next year. It all depends on what happens with the election and you know, what happens with the current administration? Do the interest rates come down quicker? The Fed has just signaled that they didn't do anything in December or they're not going to do anything in December. I think they meet this this upcoming week. That's right. They have signaled that they might do two reductions in interest rate next year. Things can always change at all. Every month there's reports on, which is one of the things you have to stay on top of. What's happening with inflation? What's happening with the CPI? What's happening with jobs? Those are the three big things the consumer price index and the various other things that relate to inflation and what's happening with the jobs reports and unemployment. Those are the things that are concerning the Fed. And, and if inflation doesn't continue to tap down like it's been, then that's where we would have concern about rates going up again. So you have to stay on top of the market. So now we're in this future that everybody's waiting on the sidelines for. This is where I'm at. Because also sellers, sellers are saying, I don't want to put, not sellers, but potential sellers, people that might have put their home on the market mm -hmm. aren't doing it because they have 70 something percent of people that have a conventional mortgage. And I'm, I'm sure it's FHA and VA as well, have an interest rate lower than 4%, Matt. That's right. Of course. I think it's almost close to 72. I can't remember the number. It's in the seventies. That's crazy times. Nobody's going to go, I'm going to give up my 3.75 and go get a 7%, you know, more than double, triple my monthly payment in some cases. Yeah, so totally. that's why we don't have as much inventory coupled with the builders 14 years in a row across the country, not building enough inventory, building enough homes and recovering from the last downturn and slowly building homes and getting back on track 14 years in a row of lower than what's needed. There would have been a housing crunch as far as before a pandemic or not, the builders aren't producing enough homes for the demand. Okay. So now we're in this future time frame. The interest rate has come down. People decide to jump back into the market. It already has come down. In a short month, we went from eight. We're about a month ago, we hit eight. We're at 7.05 today, I think, according to Mortgage News Daily, as we record this, no points and good, and good credit. That's down a point already. But when it gets down to whatever the magical number is that puts everybody back in, what's going to happen? I personally think what's going to happen is there won't be enough inventory still, even with sellers deciding, some sellers deciding to sell. Mm -hmm. There'll be such pent up demand that we'll be back into a feeding frenzy. Now, stay in the mindset of talking to your buyers and or sellers. So we could get you into that now if your market will, will allow that, like that conversation I just had about getting yeah. 4.75. I haven't seen 4.75. This is because it's end of the year. The builder wants to get these off their books. It had to close by January. Um, actually, they even had a 4.25, this particular builder, if it closed in January, we couldn't get that. We got 4.75 for a February closing, just to give you an idea. That's amazing. And that's what you have to leverage if you have those type of things in your market. Or you could stay in this mindset of the market sucks. People don't want to buy. I guess I better look at doing something else, which is what some people are doing, right? So now we're in that place where people jump back in. It's going to be a different scenario. You're not going to get tons of concessions for your buyers. We're going to be back in a scenario with the builders especially, 
Yeah. People start lining up to buy houses. They're not going to offer as much incentives. They're certainly not going to offer those kind of lower. They don't have to because now the rates are lower. What's going to happen if we don't have enough demand? I mean, we have more demand, but not enough houses. The prices are going to go up. So somebody could buy today. This is my feeling. You have to share this. It's not you can't guarantee what's going to happen a year from now. But we know what they can get right now. That scenario I just talked about. And this is your payment. And are you happy with that? It's not an arm versus you go here and here's a possible, possible future of what could happen. Everything I just said, you, you now have to compete. You're on a waiting list for that new home. You're going to get a good interest rate, but the prices are going to be higher. So is your payment going to be better now or later? So you have to lay that out and let your client decide where's their risk factor. Do they really believe the sky's going to fall and prices are going to come down? But if you can present facts, and supply and demand, it's economics, they may see that, because I personally feel we're going to have people who we've talked to this year said, we should have listened to you. Yeah, we should have listened for, to you. Oh, for sure. Because here's the deal. Wow. You're, consult, you're consulting your, your, uh, your clients, right? You're actually educating well, that all, what's going on in the market. That all goes out the window if we have some massive crisis in the country or the world that right. creates a massive economic downturn. Even though people have equity and so forth, but if we have something that crack or extended recession and people lose their jobs and we get, if people are waiting for that, then they have to wait for some crisis to happen so that we get into a scenario where prices lower because everybody has to sell their houses on distressed properties. I just don't see it coming anytime soon with the right. circumstances that we have now, barring a, you know, international global crisis. Which okay. Lord knows, you know, I mean, it's not a scenario. <laughs> it could happen, right? So yeah. you, know, you don't know, you don't have a crystal ball. You do know what you have in front of you now. And that's the point of this opening segment here is to say, what's your mindset? But to couple that with, do you understand the facts? Are you aware of the market? We're going to talk more about that. All right. So well, let's it's talk so true, Dan. I mean, at the end of the day, if you actually can explain what's going on in the market and that, you know, you have to, it is all about education and it's about getting people to open up their minds to different ideas and different, uh, different ways. I mean, my God, getting those people in with that interest rate, you know, for a February close is fantastic. Right. And there, it, it, it that's because it, that's because of you guys, you know, of consulting your clients so it's it's, awesome. it's but it's because we know the inventory and we're well, out right. looking at builders all the time and that it was something that had just happened and we only right. did it because we're out shooting video we go out and talk to all our contacts at the builders and we check in and to see what's what's going on and There's it's not on their website it yeah. wasn't on this this is pulte here america west actually and uh -huh. it wasn't on their website Okay, so and, you know uh, what? There's, there's usually always a way. You just have to find it. That's it. And there's always mm -hmm. people that are going to buy and sell, just not as many as you're used to. Right. So that's a little bit about managing buyers' expectations. You want to attract buyers that are maybe relocating to your city. One of the phenomenons that's happened post-COVID, during COVID and post-COVID, it's continued on, is the remote worker. I swear 60 70% of the people we work with this year are remote workers or they can work from home. So people are choosing where they want to move to. So we happen to be in a, Las Vegas happens to be a place people want to come move to for no state income tax, things to do here, cost of living maybe cheaper than some other West Coast cities, certainly not cheaper than the middle of the country. Our prices have gone up. And if you want the cheapest prices in the country, it's not going to be on the West Coast. It's not going to be on any the coast. middle of the country right. where you don't really have a lot to do. But if you like that, then if you're from that area, People will be moving to Europe because maybe they want the lowest price homes in the country and they can be remote. That's the point I'm making. So you've got to leverage your lead generation, whatever it is you do, your most important thing. Like we do content creation and follow up. That's how we generate our leads. Whatever it is you do, if you farm, if you caught, if you talk to expired listings, whatever it is you do, if you network, you've got to leverage your knowledge into your conversations and if you do put things online or newsletters you have to you have to show your expertise there so that's really what you've got to do and you have to be able to explain everything i just spent 15 minutes explaining for the current market right, right. and if you're not you got to get to speak with that so we're going to give you some ideas of how do you do that as well so that's managing buyers expectations and having that conversation about is it better to buy now or later or what could happen later but what really is happening now that's the only thing you can guarantee is what you have right now in front of you what you that's can right. negotiate them right now now, sellers, this is what it's been for over a year plus with with ever since people have been able to have 70 something percent of people that have mortgages have four, less than 4% interest rate that have a mortgage. 
uh, and a huge percentage of people own their houses free and clear more than they used to in a way. So many people bought with cash, but there are always people that have to sell. And those are people that are being transferred, maybe going through a divorce. Um, probate is another little niche that you can get into. There are people that want to go ahead if they believe the market's going to crash. They may want to get their equity out now. You know, They may want to go ahead and make a change and, and deal with it, especially if you can. That last one is, especially if you're working with somebody who needs to sell and wants to buy in the same area, if you can get them to, you know, and their home's in great shape, maybe you can negotiate a great deal for them right now and get multiple offers on the house because it's in great shape and then go find them a 4.75 new home to buy. Maybe. So not, all I'm saying is you might have that if you understand what's happening in your market. Yeah. Once so again, you don't, know, you don't know unless you know, right? Yeah. So, and there'll be people who want or need to sell. You have to put build your strategies around that and talk about the market. So I just don't think there's going to be tons of sellers that, just put their home on the market to upsize, downsize if the interest rates don't come down. That's what's happened for a year plus. Let's see where we go into 2024. Yeah, but go find sense. the people that need to move and use your marketing and advertising to attract those people that need to sell. That's right. Um, and honestly, so this brings us to the place of what do you need to work on? What skill set? This is the time to analyze. Do you need to work on your prospecting skills? Do you? Do you, are you clear on that? Do you know how to have that conversation I just explained? How about your presentation skills? And this is going to become ever so important. We're going to talk about it just in a moment here about a better buyer consultation. And is your materials professional when you're talking to a prospective seller and buyer? Can you show your value as a realtor with the, in the advent of all these lawsuits and the myriad lawsuits that are being filed now because there's a precedent case, um, you know, over the seller paying the commission and paying the buyer's agent, right? Maybe you need to work on negotiation uh, or closing the sale. The whole point is if you don't feel comfortable doing a buyer consultation and getting to a buyer brokerage agreement or doing a really strong listing presentation, then go work on that. Get back to your companies, go get some training, look for training outside, contact us for training. We have a lot of great content in our training program, especially our real estate sales builder program on how to do just that. And now's the time to work on that. We just, I just did, a, um, you know, we just were are working on our business plan for the new year. And Cosmo and I just literally talked yesterday and we're, we have another meeting set to make, to get our marketing materials for buyers and sellers updated and upgraded. And we're going to create a folder and we're going to, we're going to really sh show and outline succinctly our value proposition when you work with us as a seller or a buyer. Those are things you need to be doing right now to get ready for 2024 to help you convey that message. Right. Uh, I don't know how many times we can say this, Matt. <laughs> That's right. But I, I am so clear that if you are the local market expert, you can become a trusted advisor. People are not going to work with you unless they know, like, and trust you. One of the ways you're going to do that, if you're meeting people cold, you know, from buying a lead or whatever, you you have to, you start this in the conversation when you have these consultations, you've got to be able to convey and you can do that through the way you come across in your conversations with them while you're nurturing the lead to what you really present to them and the materials that you give them is going to convey that level of experience, your knowledge and all of that. It's so critical. And, you know, you, you on two levels, do you really know the market much like everything I said at the top of the podcast here? Do you understand what's happening? Do you know the numbers? Do you know where the deals are? Do you know what the trends are on the market and the numbers and so forth? And then, for example, you know where the resales are, obviously, through your MLS. The only way you're going to know new homes, if new homes are in your area, is to get out and look at them or use, a, you know, a lot of MLSs around the country have something called new home resource or builder. They have a couple builder databases, if you will. Not everybody, but if, they're, if you have new homes in your area, you probably have this. Go check it out. It's like a little database of where the builders are. It's maybe not 100% inclusive, but it does get you a starting point. Other than that, just start driving around and going and introducing yourself and, and, and making some friends of the sales rep. Get on their mailing and text list and understand what is going on. We're inundated in our promotional tab in our Gmail with all the builders sending us what's going on, but we use that, right? Absolutely. So the information is flowing to us because we started those conversations. That's what you have to do. You have to get in and know the numbers, leverage the tools you have in your MLS, get up to speed with it, and don't, you know, you have to do more than going, uh, posting a thing on social media that says here, you know, like 
take a clip from your report you get from your MLS and put it up there without any explanation about what it means. So you can look at a chart and say, oh, the median sales price is 450, but what does that mean to a buyer or seller? You know, right. how, you have to be able to interpret it and put it into layman's terms and compare it to where we've come or break it down into what a payment would be. You see what, you know, um, so that, that's really what you've got to do. And if you are not, and I'm going to tell you, Matt, mo and I was this way before I got back into doing real estate full time. I had enough knowledge to get by. Yeah. I nowhere knew the market as well as I've known the last two years because of studying it and getting into the reports and doing my market update, which makes me go know the numbers so I can confidently record a video that says, here's what's going on and here where the opportunities are. But I couldn't have done that three or four years ago. Yeah. And really, you know, it's just a matter of just doing it right. It's not that hard to set yourself apart from everybody else. You just have to make a commitment to do it. Hey, I have a question for you. You know, you said you connected with David yesterday. Is he still doing his uh, market update on a weekly basis? I think so. The mar the weekly ongoing update, which is another thing to go to go do. Right. He, you know, you, you, nobody produces a weekly update that I'm aware of. On that a, on that tool weekly. was absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic to see the trends. Yeah. It was just so in your face that what a great Thing. I'll put I a link mean, in the notes when you talked about that. So you have for tools to get you up to speed. We just mentioned look for some kind of new home resource that you might have through your MLS. You, your MLS always has stats and st statistics, or your your state board may have it. Go find that out. And then Mortgage News Daily. I talk about this a lot on the podcast. Yeah. Mortgage News Daily has been one of the other primary go to things that has helped me understand the way interest rates move. They have great content on that website. Uh, there's an app. I look at it every day. It tells me what's going on, uh, where the rates are. Um, they do a survey daily across the country, and they will post the rates for different categories, you know, FHA, VA, 15, 30 year. But they'll just they always post an article or two about why it moved the way it did. Yeah, Which That has been a game changer for me. And I'm going to throw out, I still love Keeping Current Matters. I leverage Keeping Current Matters all the time yeah. for a uh, great – blog articles and content that I can put in the newsletter. But now that is national information. So you can, it's good to have what's happening nationally, but the power comes as a local expert when you can go nationally, home sales are down this much. Here's what's going on in our neighborhood and, and have that comparison. So, right. And I've said, I say this all the time. You have to be, you have to know what's going on nationally because that's what people are hearing. Right. And they exactly. try to sometimes take that into their local area when their local area may not be anything like the national snapshot. Right. So that's key. That's right. So, totally. um, so we mentioned a minute ago, the NAR, it's not just NAR, it's NAR plus the big box brokerages. And now right. they're going after smaller brokerages and even teams have been named. It's really crazy. Right. So the whole thing about this is, first of all, it's appalling to me how many real estate agents aren't even aware that this is happening. I was going to ask you that question, you know, Jan. You know. and, and, and I have a question. Are clients really aware of this yet? Have you, has anyone actually? Uh, yeah, I had one of our brokers tell us that someone on the in our company lost. a. And I just think this has to do with the agent not right. being clear about being able to explain it. But somebody lost a listing or something over, you know, so to me, you know, what's happening is a few articles are out there. There, you know, there's a few, if sure. it, when the, when the, the big case, there was cases that have settled. There is the one that went to trial that after a week of deliberation, they found for the plaintiffs, which are the sell all the, it was class action suit, right. For sellers, you know, paid too much for commission because, you know, the, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we're going to have to do a whole a podcast on covering this so we can get you up to speed with if you're not. But the but the bottom line is, is that, that every time, every day, you're seeing probably another class action suit because now attorneys are going to get together and probably go state to state and say, run ads and say, have you, did you sell a home in 2023? Do you think that you pay too much commission call us? Okay. And because the, the you know, the, the basis of that was, I mean, they were using the, Defense, not the defense, but the plaintiff side was using how other countries sell houses. And then right. I just saw an article that came out last weekend that leveraged that and looked into it. And it's completely different. You know, when you're in Europe or Australia, there's no buyer's agents and you have to get a four year degree to get a real estate license. It's a completely different industry than it is in America. And to compare that, but people don't know that. And so that was what was no. used, in, you know. The NAR side and all the, you know, the, the, the guys that are defending, you know, they're in the lawsuit, 
you know, are trying to present that it's always been negotiable. Commission's always been negotiable. But the case was basically the sellers saying that agents say things like, if you don't offer co compensation to the buyer's agent, nobody's going to look at your house. Yeah. So they were leveraging things that people do say. So ultimately, right. I was gonna say, which we're, is gonna true. Change, we're just going to have to change the way we present and we're going to go through things. But, you know, my whole contention is for all these years, the way we've been doing it and a listing agent goes out and, and uh, negotiates a commission, they do split part of that or half of it or part of it to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, a buyer's agent comes in with the buyer saying, part of your offer is going to be paying the full commission to the listing agent and to me. So the buyer has been paying the commission in my mind. It's yep. not just been disclosed that way. So what's going to happen? And that's what we'll save that for another podcast of all the things that have to get worked through from the lenders, the uh, from uh, HUD and FHA to Fannie and Freddie coming out with new limits of what can the buyer finance, can the buyer finance commission. You know, all these things have to get worked out. It's not going to happen overnight. They're going to appeal that one lawsuit. One, you know, one of them already sure. settled. But now there's copycat lawsuits, okay? Class action lawsuits because there's a precedent case. That's what how law works, right? Jim, we're definitely um, – we'll even try to see if we can get it together next month. We're, we're definitely going to get together a panel of people to talk about this because I think it's something mm – -hmm. and, and everyone's got a slightly different take on what the situation is. And I think it would be really good to get mm -hmm. you know four or five people together to chat about it. So we're definitely going to do that. It's an unknown, but here's what we do know. It's this whole podcast today is, is has a theme about don't wait for things to happen and then you react to it. You need to be ahead of what's going on with market trends. This right. is a, going to impact the way we do business. Maybe not in 2024, but in 20 right. maybe in 2024. But just this one thing about these commission lawsuits is going to impact the way we do business. And so it's possible that we may, you know, so what are the two things that it's saying to me? Get better at taking listings, number one, which yeah, I've talked right. about already. And, and the event that that's what happens and it, listing, I always feel like you have to list the last anyway, but th there could be a little learning curve here. And in the next 24 months or so, you've got to be able to show your value proposition to a buyer. You've got to sit down and explain why they really need that representation from you. Because in those other countries, People go to the listing agent, but they really don't have representation, mm -hmm. except they hire an attorney. They'll hire an attorney to make sure the contract's okay, because it's a very, and it's always going to be a one of the most complicated transaction when somebody's buying something is a home. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts. So I've got concerns, you know, are we going to, our attorney's going to jump into the business or... Our, our buyer's agent's going to be able to show the value so that the buyer is willing to pay the commission directly to the buyer's agent through a brokerage agreement, which means that they're not going, in my mind, to offer the same deal, right? So this is all the stuff that we have to work through. All I'm saying to you now is get on top of it. Go follow. There's a whole website out there from NAR that has, I think it's NAR.competition. They might have changed the site, but go Google it and they'll give you recaps. Inman has great content about yeah what's going on with all the lawsuits and how to adjust your business. Go get on top of this. Don't wait for it to happen. Start showing your value right now. Okay. So that's, you know, this is another area that you need to be able to speak to if your clients bring this up or even talking to other agents, right? So you need your elevator pitch on how to, you know, what your response to this is, I think. So there's a link in here that we have in our, and we can put it in our show notes. Um, check the, the NAR puts a document together called 179 ways to attract buyers relocating to your area um, and, you know, what, who are ready to buy now. And it's really about 179 things. Uh, it, it talks about attracting buyers, but really what it talks about is what you do as a listing agent, right? All the, every, the, every little detail that you handle. And I believe we need to have the same thing. It could be modified, but hopefully NAR is going to put something up on the buyer side because you, if you're not doing a great job explaining what it is you do, because people think, and maybe we haven't, because people think you basically go out and show a home and you do a couple things. They don't see everything you're doing behind the scenes and you get paid this big commission. And people think generally we get paid too much. That's the challenge, right? Yeah. So, uh, but they don't really know what you're doing. And that is on us if we're not really upfront explaining the process, keeping them updated throughout to say, these are all the things behind the scenes that we're doing. And it comes through communication. 
but so many people are not good at this, Matt, and they they don't do a great job communicating, and they, yep. they kind of just stumble through, and maybe the agent on the other side is stronger, and we get the deal closed, and I don't think it's fair when I think about how people ha can do different levels of service and get paid the same commission. I agree. So, I mean, I think I in the, in the, is, at, the um, end of, at the end of the story here, it's probably going to be a stronger real estate community than it is right now. You know, that's it. Yeah, it's going to require more training or whatever, but that's all going to not that's not happening overnight. But guys, no. it's done it. It's not going away. This that's is, right. you know, this lawsuit, that initial lawsuit took years to actually get to the court. <laughs> yeah, Basically. that's right. So mindset's everything, right? What is this? I love this. Once, Once your, your mindset, mindset changes, changes, everything on the outside will change along with it. And that is the honest God's truth. Not even just, you know, what, what we're talking about today, but just in general, right? But isn't that the reality? Everybody wants the, everybody, not everybody. That's a bad thing to say. Right. I think people that have challenges with this that don't take on the responsibility that I'm responsible for how I react to things in my mindset are looking for things on the outside to change and then things are going to be better for them. And this quote is handling it perfectly. You have to make your change, your changes, and then everything changes around you, not the other way around. So right. I love it. So let's just put a last little bit in here. We want to talk about uh, making sure you bring all this home. So we just talked about areas to focus on and understanding the market and updating your skills. But here, we got to keep it simple, right? So we have these three principles to keep it simple. And number one, get clarity. We did a whole podcast on that. I know Matt can link the notes in the notes so you can go back and get the details on get clarity, narrow your focus, and take action. And in a nutshell, my feeling on getting back into real estate in the last two years is this has been my philosophy. Don't try to be all things to all people. Don't try to work in three or four different areas. You have the people that know you and whatever you do to generate new leads. That's it. Okay. And what, however it is you do, you could have a couple ways you're doing that, but you don't want to try to go, well, I'm going to farm and then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go do five different things. You'll never master them. Find the thing that makes you happy. Okay. Get yeah. into the niche that you're passionate about. Find a niche, but you have to be passionate about it. Otherwise it, you, you won't do it. It won't be fun. And then you have to actually get up every day and take action. Where is where our do the daily comes in right. and the do the daily is really become my mantra of so much so that Matt designed it and it covers the five areas that your business has to focus on on a daily basis. And a couple of them, well, let me just go through it, right? Let's just remind everybody. Hey, before One, we get there, Jan, let's go say we have a document that we'd like you to download. It's called My Path. We've had this and we actually tweak it every single year. And this year we completely revamped My Path to really focus on doing mm -hmm. the daily, right? So you can download My Path over at our website, wblcoaching.com. Go to our freebies page and you can download the My Path document. We're going to go through that a little bit. And it starts with. That's it. Thank you. That's the setup. So this is the new document um, that is completely in our my path and it embraces this philosophy of do the daily. And it's just this reminder. So there's a visual that you can get. You can even get it in our store and get a sticker if you want and put it. I have it all over my office space. And, and it's just this reminder of this simplicity, right? Getting clarity, narrow your focus and take action. Here's where the action comes in. Morning routine, we're big proponents of whatever it takes to get you in the right mindset every day for yourself. Take care of yourself first. You have more energy to do everything for everybody else. You right. know whatever that's going to be for you. Walking, exercising, eating healthy, getting yourself ready for the day. Then the next two things that are most important in my book are most people would go right to active clients. You can make this be whatever priority you want, but this is what it is for me because lead gen and lead follow-up have to be in your schedule. Because if you have active clients today, of course you're going to work with them. If you have clients tomorrow or the next day, you're going to do things to get ready for them. That's a no-brainer. Most people, and number five is, so active clients for me is right in there, three or, it could be three, it could be four. Because if you have active clients today, you're probably going to bump it up and work on it, right? But lead gen and lead follow-up is where people lack. Because what we do, we may or may not do our morning routine. We definitely work with our active clients and we definitely spend time in number five, which is admin and escrows. This is where you could put all your energy into admin is everything. Training, uh, prepping materials, get you know, just doing everything that you do on a daily basis plus manage your escrows. 
and active clients. Okay, so here's the problem. If all I do is admin and escrows and active clients, when I don't have active clients anymore because I've been so big, because I was in this cycle several times this year, yeah. um, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we haven't been doing um, the lead gen that we were so good at posting our videos and we haven't been lead following up. And so this is why cycles for real estate agents are, I have five escrows. I'm managing all that and I'm working with those clients. That was what my, ne my, next, my last 45 days were. I didn't put energy into lead gen and lead follow up. So now I have to start over. I have to get back to it. And now I got to ramp up 30 days and generate leads. So the and that is, is the roller coaster of your revenue, right? Right on. So in your calendar every day, morning routine, lead gen, lead follow up, active clients and all the admin and escrow time has to fill in the other time. That's where I'm trying to tell you. That you yeah, and in our life path, we have we have it set up for you where you can actually go in seven days a week, depending upon how how often you're doing wow. your 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 uh, that your daily right, and where you can actually check off the the areas you know of those five steps, which ones you did and which ones you didn't didn't do, and after a very short amount of time, even in a week, I dare say, a yeah. pattern will start arising, right, and you will know right there in your front in your front of your face, you know where you are not spending the time that you need to be spending. Which so is listen, that really being said, you may have a day because you legitimately are working 10 hours a day with multiple clients and managing escrows. Okay. You just have to have awareness of, I didn't get my lead gen and lead follow up and I either need to make it up somewhere. I have to follow up more the next day and you just can't allow a whole week to go by and a week turns into two weeks. And that's what I'm talking about. That's right. You know, and before we show you, you talk about these other little, we have some other tools in there for you. I just want to reiterate, it, it sounds easy, but the hardest, it's not, it is easy. It's, it's, it's simple. It's just not necessarily easy. I mean, maybe that's what it is. Yep. That's the right. The thing I'm trying to say is you've got to get clear about what it is you're going to do. That is what I think holds people up. What is your lead gen? What is it that you do? You know, what is it that you do? You're always going to be following up with people that you know. Everyone has that. Mm -hmm. Past clients, I need to follow up people that I know, check in with them. That's a given. Everyone does that okay. Probably not people could work on that a little bit, but not all your businesses are going to 100% come from there, especially if you're newer and you don't have a huge database. So you've got to have another way that you're generating new business. And this is, I think, is a challenge. We've done a ton of shows this year on helping you try to figure out what that is. And, going, and now's the time, if you haven't been clear, as you move into the new year, to get super clear about your main way to generate business. And then if you, and even if it's paid leads, I don't care, do something. But if you get leads and then you don't, because not all the people want to buy right now or sell right now. Mm -hmm. So number one, get leads. Number two, have a solid program to stay in touch with those people because that's the other failing. So those two to me are the most important. You know, I think the morning routine is the most important thing. But when it comes to business, lead gen and lead follow up, if you don't do that, you don't have a business. Yeah. So just think, you know, to Jan's point, and let's say you're using my path on a daily basis, like I said, and looking for that, those trends in there, if all of a sudden you have nothing checked for lead follow up, you got a problem, right? Because those aren't going to convert those yeah. leads are not these leads you spent so much time, you know, acquiring, they're just going to go away. They're going to go to somebody else. So I don't know. I think it's a little super valuable tool because it really shows you where you are actually working. If you're honest, when you're filling it out. What else is in there for people that just like checklists and things that are going to help them? Yeah, we have the to-do list, which, you know, just has a basic things. It actually just keeps things, you know, really the, the purpose of a lot of what my path really is, is to keep stuff in front of your face, right? And to make you constantly be thinking about your business. And I think that, you know, so often we focus on the things that are either on fire, right? Or that we like to do. But the, you know, the, the, the purpose of this is to, you know, to, for you to sit down and actually filling out your my path um, uh, for for your daily task or your weekly task, however you are actually, you know, you choose to do it should be part of that morning routine, right? So um, anyway, so the to do and this, this has got, uh, you know, your priority connections that you want to do, um, uh, today's tasks that you need to handle the listings and sales that you have going on. So you have a constant awareness of what's going on in your business. Um, any hot prospects that you uh, that you're working with, that once again brings these things front of mind, as opposed to just kind of flowing out there like on a post-it note that you might find somewhere. Um, and if you're doing any sort of marketing on videos and social media, just like what you need to do to actually, you know, do that, that really could just say marketing in general. But uh, mm -hmm. we focus on on videos and social more than anything else. So, anything else, Jan? You think on the to-do list? 
Yep, that's perfect. Yep, exactly. And then we have a several other, uh, really, the MyPath is very base, not basic, but it's very intuitive, right? This is kind of like the high level look of, of, of what you're doing over the weeks and months and quarters. So you have like, you know what you're doing on the daily because like you're doing that every day, right? But you need to have that, uh, you, you know, it kind of fits into the rest of your business plan of what's going on down the next month or what's going on next quarter or what you need to really be focusing on right. annually if you want to take your business from A to, well, I was going to say Z, but let's just take it to B. Let's just move your, let's just move it up one notch. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have your monthly roadmap on here, which you can just go in once again. It's like taking your business plan and then putting it into something, a document that you can see on a daily basis or, uh, and just kind of keep once again, front of mind. And this, you know, this goes through all 12 months talking about what you're going to do personally uh, this year in your plan, in your business, and then how you're going to get up and get out, right? So to to give yourself, uh, yeah. to open up your mind and free your mind up to, um, you know, be more aligned uh, so you can connect and prosper. I like that document for putting in where my time off is going to be scheduled, you know, like exactly. maybe um, plan vacations or short weekend getaways or goals, or maybe I'm going to take some training. That was the idea of this monthly roadmap. It just takes the year and, breaks it down into maybe milestones of things that you're going to do. So you can use it however you want, but it's all, it's a planning thing. That's really all. Right. And you know, once I think and we didn't say this, but this is an Excel spreadsheet, right? So all these little work, all the tabs across the bottom are these uh, worksheets that we're showing right here uh, when we're um, going through this today. So this document is, it's just another place that you can, you know, go to with has really, this is like the, the, the big overview of your business plan. Uh, project pipeline, your things that you need to do, the things you are doing and the things that you're done, right? And there's nothing better than moving things from a do to a done category. So um, it yeah. helps you realize that you're moving your plan along throughout the year. So yeah. that's a great that's a great one, too. Uh, your business pipeline, what's coming up in your business over the next 30, 60 and 90 days. Once again, keeping it front of mind, um, you know, and and uh, uh, allowing you to make sure that things are fresh. And so things don't fall through the cracks. I mean, really, that's the key to a lot of this. Right. And then super important. And we've we, you know, this is like, I think the most uh you know underutilized uh process in the business planning uh process is of, of, of analyzing where you are of, you know, along the way throughout the year right because your plan is going to change it is you're going to see you're going to do things in the quarter that that um are working better than others so you need to tweak your things along the way so we recommend at the very least doing it every quarterly go in uh, ponder, practice, perfect, and prosper. Those are that, that's our alliteration for the quarterly tune-up, and it, it it is so important for you to give yourself a pat on the back. You know, celebrate your successes, and then look at things that are on track, uh, the roadblocks that you're having, and then you know what you want to do for your course corrections along the way to make sure that you can get to those goals as you know and reach or exceed your ultimate goal for the end of the year. So, uh, my path once again is located on wbnlcoaching.com. It's in our freebie section. Go and download that document today. And even if you only use the daily, it's a great document to to help you stay on track um, for the coming year. I love it and. I just found it, you know, was it something we did several years ago just to, for my brain, it's just getting organized into checklists and ways to see the data. Because I have to have it. You can put all that online and I do have it online, but if it's right. not in front of me, that's just the way I work. If it's not in front of me that I can carry today. Uh, a, a checklist of some sort, then it's not going to work for me. It's so funny because as Jan was, uh, when we were, you know, kind of re, you know, enhancing this and kind of augmenting it for, for 2024 and adding the daily in there, Jan's like, can they, now, can that be printed out? Can that be printed out on one page? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I must have spent like three hours the other day formatting the daily so you can print out the daily and um, it'll be a great document if you really want to actually do it too. So the two ways to do it, all those check boxes, obviously you can check online, right? So they, they're checkable if you just want to have the the digital document but if you want to print that out it's ready and set for you awesome all right there it is so go figure out what you're going to focus on in the new year make those adjustments now before the new year is here because we're basically what how many days yeah. away yeah two now we're like three, whoa, two and a half three weeks away exactly all right that's it Speaking of that, we got some. Uh, we have one more Ask Five coming up this month, and then we just have our general year end thing, year end podcast coming up, talking a little bit about uh, the year in review. Uh, a lot of good things planned for twenty twenty four, like said, including that uh, uh, 
panel on uh, what's going on in the you know in the industry, uh, which we're going to get together as well. So if you're out there listening, any brokers that have your opinions that you'd like to share with us, contact us. Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd like to, to to be a guest on the 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 podcast. We'd love to have you. So, all right, Jenna Bryan. Anything else? You know, the holidays. It was Jenna Bryan came and visited my sweet P and I last week, and we had a great time. It was, it was awesome. Fun. Yep, I always love coming to California and having a visit with the Emersons. It was and, wonderful. And Jan O'Brien and I went out for a you know a couple, well, almost a three mile uh, hike, sla- walk slash hike. Talked about our, we did our business plan for WB and O coaching. There's so. a walking business plan meeting, which we like to do. Yeah, exactly. which is the best thing in the world. There it is. All right, everyone. Well, you know, as always, get up, get out. Here's the deal, people. You know, stay focused, stay focused, and do the freaking daily. And then also, be forever wandering. <laughs> but no. But do the daily. But do, but do the freaking daily. <laughs>